the best sport you can play while actually drinking a beer? I think I found it. Hey, there's a big brewery sale in the works. What's it mean for craft beer drinkers? Nice shot. He's Joe Sixpack, I'm Glenn Mack now, and from the Ship Bottom Beer Garden at Linvilla Orchards, this is What's Brewing. Close enough. What's Brewing, brought to you in part by Monco Makers, Powered by the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board, download the app. And by the Conshohocken Brewing Company, now with five locations. Ready? Fire! Whoa! Hey, do you guys want to come with us? Hey, welcome to What's Brewing with Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Mack. Now we're at the Ship Bottom Beer Gardens at Linvilla Orchard. Joe Sixpack, what a great place to be in the summer. It is, great sun time. You like my shirt? This is my beer garden shirt. Yeah, it looks like a factory exploded, but it <laughs> looks good on you though. Thanks. Um, we did a show, a couple shows last year down at Ship Bottom down the Jersey Shore. It's interesting that they have this place all the way out here in Lynn Villa, uh, but it's a lot of fun. It is, it's uh, actually Ship Bottom started as a Delaware County brewery and they've opened up this place here. Uh, I think it's their one spot in Pennsylvania. Uh, really, it is a nice one. Well, really nice, you bring the kids, you pick some apples, you have a beer. So I'm drinking a, a Hefeweizen Ale here by Ship Bottom, which gets us into kind of what we're gonna do to start our show with our beer swap. And today is wheat beers which Joe Sixpack, as we discussed uh, Golden Ales a couple weeks ago, I get a sense that wheat beers may not be as popular as they used to be. Well, it seems like you know all the headlines go to IPAs these days, and uh, so they chew up a lot of the turf. Uh, you see the wheat beers mainly in the summertime, I think. Uh, but yeah, again, heck, you see now you're seeing hoppy wheat beers, but we're the ones that we brought together are more of the traditional wheat beers. All right, so here's what I brought you. Sierra Nevada, we always pay tribute to, one of the great early craft breweries in America. I didn't even know they make this. It's a Keller Weiss Bavarian style wheat. So what do we know about this? Well, it's one of my favorites. I think at one point I actually said this is the best Bavarian style wheat beer made in America. Is that right? Uh, I think partly it's because, and as you can see, there's a lot of foam in this. It's a highly carbonated beer. Yeah, sure. uh, and they are- Sorry about that pour. All right. I believe, I'm not sure if they're still doing it, but they were doing open fermentation on this, which I think is one of the keys to, the, to a Bavarian style wheat beer where you get those really great uh, banana and clove aromas and a little bit of sharp uh, peppery taste. Really so. nice, very cloudy. Um, so in, in, there's different styles of wheat beers, there's different varieties, right? There's the Hefeweizen, the Dunkel Weizen. I can't even yeah. pronounce half of these You're things. You're getting them good though. There, good. What do you go, yeah. the Berliner Weiss? What do I right. need to know in that sense? All right, so Weizen is, is, uh, is wheat in yeah. German and uh, to me, the most authentic ones are the German variety, the Bavarian ones, but there are other uh, varieties, including, uh, as I was sipping here earlier, this is more of an American wheat style. This one's flavored with uh, blueberries. They tend to be a little bit uh, uh, less of, a, of an assertive beer and more like a refreshment beer. And then, and then the one uh, we actually have a variety here, I think, is this mm -hmm. Allagash. This is closer to what you would call a Belgian style or a wit beer. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's, there's different varieties out there. Right, we also have the Hijinx Wicked White here, and uh, our friends at Trogues make this unfiltered Dreamweaver. So I got all these locally. Right. You brought me something 
from way yeah, out of town. Yeah, give me your opener there because I brought something special here. This is the Koenig Ludwig Weiss beer. Let's say again. King Ludwig. He okay. was uh, the king of, uh, of uh, Bavaria at one time when it was a separate state. And uh, this is a great brewery in Bavaria. I and mean, to me, this is the more authentic style. And when it's authentic, I think we should pour it in an authentic wheat beer or Hefeweizen glass. Oh. So th this is designed to catch the foam. Uh -huh. But the way we're going to do it, what? and I'm going to screw this up, I'm sure, because it's live on camera. But let me do this as uh, we try it. That's how you do it. We're huh? going to go and we'll pull this thing up slowly. Look at and you. Look at that. Doesn't that look good what now? What a craftsman you are. I cheated a little bit because this is only a 12 ounce bottle. Yeah, yeah, but and still, normally you want to have one of those half cool. liter. So when you were over, you went over there. This I is did how visit they did it. it. This is in a castle. And let me tell you, this was one of my favorite brewery visits ever because I had lunch at the brewery with the Princess of Bavaria. It was a great, great trip. Dropping names. Yeah. Good well, for she, you. She drops Stroh six packs names. So that's but good. Do that's I get to try you. this? That's wow. Glenn. Give that, that a is, shot. That's a beauty. Give it a smell first. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really nice. Isn't it? Yeah, I always think like I'm not going to like wheat beers, but I really do like wheat beers. All right, one quick question because we got a lot to move on to. What's with the orange slices in the wheat yeah, beer? Yeah, is that just an yeah. uh, American I, I, thing? It is just, well, actually it has spread to Europe, unfortunately, but uh, to me, that that slice of fruit is designed to sort of play off the flavors that are already in the wheat beer, and to me it's akin to putting ketchup on a steak. I just don't want it to see okay. it. So. All right, so nice, uh, nice thing for the summer, wheat beers, uh, good time of year, and, and some of the ones we think are really nice varieties, including the ship bottom. There's a lot going on right now that we need to talk about. The biggest thing being news comes out, big merger, Dogfish Head down in Delaware, very popular local right. brewery with Sam Adams, uh, I think the number two size craft brewery right. in the country. Exactly. W what does this well, mean? This news just broke uh, yesterday for, uh, well, as, as we, uh, film, just, this, as we yeah. film this. So uh, uh, we don't really know how this is going to play out, but it's a $300 million deal. They're calling it a merger. It's a sale. Uh, Dogfish Head, which is one of the uh, region's pioneer breweries, uh, great beers. We've had them on our show any number of times. Mm -hmm. In fact, their 120-minute uh, IPA is in our IPA brew and, town. And doing well. Exactly. And it's very popular locally. Uh, and they have basically have been purchased by Sam Adams, by Boston Beer. And nobody really knows how this is going to play out. But I think, importantly, the two key people involved in this are Jim Cook, who owns uh, the majority of Boston Boston Beer, and Sam Calagione, uh, along with his wife Mariah, who own uh, Dogfish Head, they're still going to be very active in these breweries, which is a great thing, okay. I think. Two quick things. One is I saw a lot of people on social media said sellout. That it, it, you know, shame on Dogfish Head for doing it. They're just selling out for the money, which, by the way, I never have a problem with somebody selling for the money. Should people be upset about it? Well, I guess there's going to be some people inevitably that are going to be sell, uh, upset, especially since Sam uh, was one of these advocates of independence. Uh, but we're in an age now where these breweries the size of independence that are sort of large but not huge, they need to keep growing. Otherwise, they don't succeed. And so they need this uh, infusion of cash. Uh, last question, is it going to mean anything anytime soon for consumers? Will they notice? A difference in that's beer. the problem I mean like I said we just found out about this deal yesterday but uh, my hope is that it means good things for beer because both breweries are producing great beers uh, maybe not on the front of everybody's uh, list of the best breweries these days but they do make great beer and I can't wait to see what they do together all right coming up yes we like to drink beer but Joe Sixpack and I we're athletes as well <laughs> we're gonna talk about the best sport you can play while drinking a beer why not from the Ship Bottom Beer Garden at Lynn Villa Orchards, Joe Sixpack, Len Mack. Now, this is What's Brewing. Hi, it's Glenn Mack. Now, you've seen some of our Conchock and Brewing Company spots on this show, so I'd like to invite you to come and check them out. You can find us in Conchahokan, Bridgeport, Phoenixville, King of Prussia, and here in Havertown, where I'm enjoying an award winning Puddler's Row right now. It's one of our year-round core beers, along with Type A IPA and user-friendly Blondale. We've also got exciting seasonal beers, like Blood Money IPA, Philly Vice, and our unfiltered IPA series. And come hungry. From burgers and wings to salads and small bites, there's something for everyone. Don't leave without trying the amazing cheese cream. 
The warm weather is here, so you can enjoy yourself on one of our outdoor spaces. And good news, you can find Conshohocken beers at grocery stores, distributors, and restaurants throughout PA, South Jersey, and Delaware. So get yourself to Conshohocken Brewing Company. I'll meet you at the bar. Hey, welcome back to What's Brewing, Joe Sixpack, Glenn Mack. Now we're at the uh, Ship Bottom Beer Garden at uh, Linvilla Orchards. What a great place. I love uh, it here. Having a good time. And people all around us playing cornhole, which is a great activity to play while you drink beer. Right. Not sure it's a sport, but for our purposes today it is. <laughs> and you had a great idea, which is what is the best sport you can play while drinking a beer because of the summer we're just doing the outdoors. Right, the outdoors because no bowling today. No bowling or darts. Those are indoor okay. sports and they have their own uh, benefits and whatever for uh, rating them. But this is an outdoor sport and I've came up with four criteria. The most important, and this is always. You, you always go the extra mile. <laughs> the most important piece of uh, that yeah. you have to have in any, any beer drinking sport is it has to be easy to learn and play. Don't confuse us, okay? okay? Right. I don't Not wanna... too many rules. Exactly. Okay. The second, is it fun? It's got to be a fun game. You mm -hmm. know, uh, that rules out one, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, can you play it without keeping score? Does it really matter who wins or loses? And finally, can you play it? without putting your beer down. I think that's maybe the most important. Ah, actually. okay, so. I like that. All right, so here's here's some of the suggestions. Uh, here's some of the ones that came up. All right, let's start with cornhole. Where does that fit in for you? Well, it's it's up there. It's becoming hugely popular. It might be, it might be the most popular one out there. Um, I think that, you know, I like it a lot because you can hold your, your beer. It's easy to uh, learn. Uh, it's sort of pointless. I, I mean, nobody yeah. really keeps scoring. No, and I think it requires beer because if you're playing it without beer, it gets boring pretty fast. Yeah, well, also known as hipster horseshoes. Yeah, right. I mean, right. it's uh, there's no real equipment. Uh, these these boards are pretty easy to make, so it's it's up there among the top. Okay, ones. I grew up playing horseshoes. You you are you take an anti horseshoe stance. I do. It makes too much noise. Oh, jeez. Come on. It's, we, we talked about Jenga a few weeks ago. Yeah, you're anti-Jenga, exactly. too. That's right. It makes right. too much noise. All right. <laughs> These are some of the ones that were suggested. Both we put it on social media. By the way, at Real Glenn Mac now, at Beer Radar, we always invite your input. Always like to hear from you. Um, at What's Brewing PA also. Um, golf, of course. Well, right? golf you can't, is, yeah, do have to put the beer down. You do have to put it, but you Maybe can. Maybe not to putt. You can bring your beer with you if you get a cart. And you can right? keep it cold there. Um, and there's a 19th hole at the end. Yeah. So, you know, that's an official hole, by the way. They keep score there. Okay. But the problem is, it's no fun. I mean, did golf's you ever, no fun. Did you ever see a happy golfer? I like playing golf. Do, are you happy at the end ever? Mm, only if I don't keep score. <laughs> if I keep score, I'm pretty miserable. Yeah, exactly. Some of the ones that people brought up wiffle ball. I'm a fan of wiffle ball. Uh, I played that when I was a kid a lot, but I haven't oh, played no, it in years. Oh, no, Wiffle Ball. Oh, I can throw that. I, I can get a good curve there. Really? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, croquet. Oh, I hadn't even thought about that. That's actually a pretty good one, although it's sort of like that, you know, a little bit of English uh, you hold your everything. pinky out type you're, of thing. You're and hard you had to, to please. You had to set it up, too. Uh, yeah, well, you do have to set it up, and you probably <laughs> trip over it. Does fishing count as a sport? Uh, absolutely not. Okay. Come There's on. a great line that fishing is the only sport that you can actually gain weight as you do it. <laughs> um, all right, uh, two more. Now, you, you put softball as your number two. Yeah, I like softball a lot because, again, you really, you can play it mainly with while holding a beer. The only There's only two moments when you can't. That's when you're batting or yeah. when you actually have to catch the ball and then throw it with your other hand. Yeah. That's, that, yeah, that's a, it's a real challenge. But it is, it is. Yeah, it boy. really does <laughs> divide the, uh, the men from the boys. Yeah, you really <laughs> are. You're quite the athlete there, aren't you? And I love what you put as your favorite. Yes, bocce. Yeah. I love bocce. It's a great game. Uh, it, you never have to put your beer, your beer down there. It does have a little bit of difficulty on it, uh, and you can really get your frustration out because you can whack the other guy's balls uh, at will. Uh, Careful with that. <laughs> the only problem with you have to it, drink a lot of beer to withstand that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The only problem from uh, an American beer drinking sport uh, point of view is that it is European. So, <laughs> so now we're going xenophobic. <laughs> okay, All right, sorry. very good. Uh, and I had one. Oh, whatever happened to lawn darts? Uh, you mean those? Those what are they? They're like uh, weapons or something. Yes, they you throw, throw it too other? far, you pierce the guy's yeah, leg. Yeah, I like that good. game. That's good. Well, well there you go. Anyway, we uh, love your suggestions on that. 
and we had a great time. We're having a great time here um, at Lynn Villa Beer Garden at Ship Bottom, but there reverse that. Ship Bottom Beer Garden at Lynn Villa There Orchards. you go. Joe Sixpack's actually about to go on a road trip where he has a great find if you ever want beer delivered right to your house. We'll tell you all about that next on What's Brewing. I'm Joe Sixpack. I love beer and I love travel. I've visited great breweries around the world and I'm inviting you to join me on my next expedition to France. Yes, they make beer in France. We'll travel the Seine on a luxury river cruise from Paris to Normandy. We'll visit breweries, explore the sites, drink great beer, and maybe some wine. Join me in October 2020. Just visit my website at phillybeerworld.com. Let's discover a world of beer together. Welcome back to What's Brewing from the Ship Bottom Beer Garden here at Lynn Villa Orchards. Really fun place to come all summer long. You get some great beer, you get some great food, you pick some apples. What could be more fun? Well, Joe Sixpack went out on the road this week and found a great, great service. All right, I'm here with Mario Severo. Mario, you do not look like a butler to me. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. But uh, it's the kind of experience we're looking to facilitate. Tell me, what is the beverage butler? With a lot of the breweries that are opening up today uh, and a lot of the new beer styles that are uh, being presented in the marketplace, we wanted to bring uh, those styles the opportunity to try them uh, in a delivery format to the customer. And all the while, from people going online and ordering to our customer service team to them receiving their order, it's a first class experience, hence the butler. Okay, so you have a pretty cool website, thebevbutler.com. After you fill out this, uh, your preferences and so on, you guys back here at the Bev Butler uh, pack up a 12 pack of, of beers here and they get delivered to my door. Uh, beer delivery is a new thing in the world of beer, it seems like. We're seeing yeah. some uh, companies cropping up. Uh, what makes yours different? Uh, what we're bringing them is going to be specific to them. Uh, in essence, we're guaranteeing what's delivered they're going to really enjoy. Uh, so that's the first thing. Uh, on behalf of the delivery, uh, we have our own fleet of vehicles. We're relying on delivering it ourselves. Uh, and we guarantee that upon scheduling of delivery, uh, it'll fall within a one-hour window. I want to check this out because I, we did fill out my preference is online uh, and I told you that I like IPAs uh, but I do like the the uh, sort of the maltier beers uh, I'm not a big fan of hazy beer so let's find out what we got inside sure, this yeah, case here absolutely. all right it's nicely packed 12 pack here of cans makes that easier delivery yeah, I guess it okay sure does, yeah. all right so we've got this tangerine micro mosa from free will uh, haven't tried that one yet so that's a nice one to experience a Jersey Devil Double IPA from uh, Brotherton. Uh, love that brewery, and uh, can't wait to try this one. Another new one for me. Yeah, we know you like the little malt forward, so we thought that would make a lot of sense. Okay. Uh, this is one that we know you're not on the haze craze. <laughs> okay. And, um, we wanted to bring something that we thought you might be willing to try. Okay. Well, let's give it a shot then. This okay. is the official from Bell's. It's their hazy India Pale Ale, uh, described as smooth, aromatic, and juicy. It is hazy. Cheers, Mario. So I'm, I'm a little I, nervous. I, I am a little nervous, uh, but I trust. Okay. okay cool. Nice body in this beer. Uh, it's not overly fruity. I mean, it is, does have that fruit flavor that the haze does, but it's got a lot of bitterness, which I do like. Yeah. Uh, not a bad, not a bad suggestion. And that's sort of the whole idea of these kind of curated selections is to introduce beer drinkers to new styles. Correct, and, and we, uh, with our database, we have each beer in our inventory categorized, so we know exactly where they fall within the profile, but we also have it set up that on an individual basis, we're tracking what we're sending you. Uh, you'll never receive the same beer in a, in a given year. Uh, so you're always going to be receiving new things. Uh, we're delivering uh, weekdays in the evenings as well as on the weekends. Uh, we can deliver to home or work, assuming your boss is cool with that. You can get more information online at thebevbutler.com. I actually uh, fat, rat, fat it on my phone. It's a nice looking website. Very mobile friendly and uh, we think people will enjoy being on it. It's, uh, it's a straightforward process. 
All right, I can't wait for my next delivery. Uh, Glenn, you got to sign this thing up here. I know you love some of these uh, hazy IPAs. I'm sure they'll find something good for you, too. So beer delivery is a new trend in the, in the world of craft beer. You should give it a shot, Glenn. Well, I'm about to get knee surgery. I'm going to lay it up at home for about four weeks. So yeah. you know what? Perfect. Give me that app. I'm going to get on that yeah. right away. All right, Joe Sixpack, from the very beginning of the show this year, we've been doing our IPA brew down. Field of 32, actually, I think you put in 36. Right. People can always vote on it at Real Glenn Mac now at Joe Sixpack, or I mean, excuse me, at Beer Radar. We're in, uh, what, the second round? We're getting deep we're into getting it. We're getting deep into it, yeah. We're, uh, we're, we're, we're whittling it down for sure. And we had two matchups uh, this week we, in our Keystone Keepers division, which is all Pennsylvania beers. And really what's becoming sort of a, a hard charging uh, favorite in this is Tired Hands, their Alien Church beat uh, Weyerbacher Double Simcoe. Uh, they blew them out actually. And uh, you know, it's it's starting to look like they're gonna be coming out strong and hard in that. They're gonna yeah. be tough to beat. They are a fan favorite and yep. uh, good for them. They move on. And what was the other one? The other one was in our go-to brews, which are beers that you sort of just, well, any kind of IPA that you know there's always gonna be there. You can always pull it out. Easy drinking and uh, actually one of your favorite favorites Ithaca Flower Power yeah, they dropped yeah. to uh, Stone Enjoy by IPA that was a bit of a closer race it's a fine beer Stone Enjoy but I really like Ithaca Flower Power I was a little disappointed by yeah. that one but hey that's you know the people have spoken right. speaking of people who have spoken we're going to come back we're going to talk to Robert Zarco of Ship Bottom this is his place we're going to drink some of his beers talk about what he's up to Stay with us. We're coming right back on What's Brewing. To what's brewing we're at the ship bottom beer garden at Linvilla orchards it's just a beautiful day in may having a great time and i am drink, drinking a hop and hazy ipa and then, you know this is this is my style joe sixpack and let me thank the man who who made this robert zarko the founder of ship bottom and kind of the idea for all this yeah, thanks so for let, coming out oh Appreciate it's our it. pleasure man thanks for inviting us let's start with this place how'd you come about doing this uh, actually, one of my business partners came up with the idea. Uh, we were looking for a pop-up spot, and uh, I used to work with Linville in the past when I, the original brewery was out of my garage in Wallingford, Delaware County. Yep. We used to bring our spent grain here. So we'd bring it, they'd feed their animals with it. So I had a little bit of relationship. Uh, Bill Goodwin from Goodwood Design basically said, hey, why don't we do it there? So I went and drove over, talked to him about it, and they loved the idea of doing it. Well, great spot, great location. People are out here playing. People bring their kids, pick apples, you know, have a good time. And What, and what is this actually? We're, it's, we're surrounded by walls here. Was this a barn or something? This was sort? the old octagonal barn that they had. So it burnt down, and then we're repurposing it as a beer garden. Yeah, it's a, it's a great spot. Uh, kind of looks like Stonehenge. It does, it does. Uh, <laughs> it's sort of secluded. Uh, uh, keeps the rugrats from escaping, I think. Look at you, you <laughs> such an anti-kid person. This is the ideal place for people to bring their kids. People are playing Jenga, you can't stand any. By the way, what are you drinking? This now? is looks an like I a hefty apple cider it, is what it looks well, like. Well, it does have fruit in it. It's a strawberry puree IPA. And you know, one of the cool things in beer gardens these days is that, slug that. that breweries that. will bring in special beers and this is on cask here yes, uh, yes. so we nice try nice. to have a cask every week yeah I, I, that's pretty cool having cask yeah. ale at a beer garden mm. it's neat gives so. you some variety so that's what we try to do and a lot of the different things we're going to do with Lynn Villa we're going to use their elements so we're going to use produce you know fruits vegetables for a different beer more to farm the table so when they have festivals like the strawberry festival blueberry and uh, peach festival we'll do different beers that's for those. beautiful that's great so uh, you do a lot of different events when anytime and you should really follow uh, ship bottom on instagram and on facebook because there's i think 
there's more events coming out of your brewery than anybody else, it seems like. I'm getting pretty you, tired. You, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but one of the fun things that you set up this summer is a, uh, a VW bus uh, that will come and bring beer to your event, uh, yes. perhaps. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, we had the idea of just doing a mobile beer garden. Um, nobody's really doing that, so we want to promote a 2019 uh, summer tour. So we're going to bring the beach party to you wherever you're located. So right now we're at Citizens Bank Park for a beer fest. Um, we've advertised at graduation parties, weddings, uh, been getting a phenomenal response from that and it's working out well. We actually wanted to do a concert t-shirt with the tour dates on the back oh, that's and great. promote it that way. So we're looking to put that together. And but you're also renting it out if people want it. Yeah, it's right? a 1971 VW bus. That is cool. It's really cool. <laughs> I want and when I drive down the road, people go nuts yeah. <laughs> seeing it. So. Right, a rush hour, people get running yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. What are you drinking here? I'm drinking the uh, Mermaid Blonde Ale. Um, this is a special release that was put out today. Um, this is a uh, charitable beer, so my daughter suffers from a rare disease called Sturge Weber syndrome, so we're giving a uh, portion of the, the sales to the Sturge Weber Foundation, so this is extremely important to me. Um, I wanted to do this for years and finally pulled this off. And so uh, folks watching the show can find this in their store? Yes, or yes throughout Jersey and Philadelphia. Right, what is your distribution now? Uh, we are expanding. So last year we had one sales rep. This year we have three in New Jersey, and nice. then we focus on Philadelphia and the surrounding counties. So Do you we're get expanding. you get out into the burbs. Yeah, Delaware, yeah, definitely. Montgomery, yep. Chester, good. Yeah, good. all over. Is is now Ship Bottom is how many years old now? Uh, we from the original garage brewery. That's 2012. So that's seven years old. So and, do you figure that, are you where you wanted to be after seven years? I wanted to be like Sam Calgione. <laughs> that didn't happen, but I'm pretty proud of what we've done. We probably canned about 25 different brands and things are going well, so it's pretty exciting. Well, we were down your place last year in the winter yeah. down on Long Beach Island. And what I remember that day, Joe Sixpack, is we're driving and there's nobody on the roads. Right. I've never seen the shore that empty and I'm thinking, boy, we're gonna get to ship bottom. There's gonna be nobody there. We got there on a, I think it was a Saturday afternoon, and it was packed. So I'm assuming this time of year, your place down in oh, Long Beach Island yeah, even, even it, it, it goes crazy. We more. have lines out the door down the street. It, it's kind of crazy. Let's talk about how you got started because many of the people watching this show either make their own beer at home or dream of it. So just give a, the quick background on how you became this guy. Yeah, so uh, it was just an idea. It was a home brewing since 1995 and uh, really enjoyed it. Um, people start liking what I was putting out as far as friends and family encouraged me to start doing it and had this wild idea that I would open a brewery and make money. Well, didn't realize it was very capital. Who could ever do that? <laughs> yeah, so did it out of my garage, got local approval from the township and then from the state and then from the federal government and opened back in 2012 nano system so it was a uh, one barrel system put out two half kegs at a time and just distribute to local bars and now and now uh, 15 barrel system uh, we're looking at another spot to move into in the next year and a half we're trying to close up on this deal and uh, it's going to be something that nobody's done um, in the nation um, it's kind of interesting so we're gonna have to do another show or yeah two. you're gonna yeah, like we'll, it all right yeah. we'll have him back next week and we're gonna pry this out of him i think yeah so. yeah. yeah we like it here so much we're not leaving <laughs> we are gonna do the show here next week so thank you robert zarko thank thanks you. to Cheers. you thanks Cheers. to ship bottom thanks to lynn villa orchards and thank you everybody for watching we will see you next week on another episode of What's Brewing. What's Brewing, brought to you in part by Monco Makers, powered by the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board. Download the app. And by the Conshohocken Brewing Company, now with five locations.